Tell me your name. It's Kerry uh, Sapalo, C A R Y, and then S U P A L O. Okay, and where are you from, Kerry? I'm from State College, Pennsylvania. And how did you become involved or first hear about Camp Can Do? I received a phone call from uh, Mr. Torres back oh, maybe in early February of this year, and we talked about the concept of what he was hoping to do with this week long camp and the inclusion of various types of activities for the kids to expose them to access technologies and other learning experiences and as part of that uh, Mr. Torres wanted me to um, have some sort of a science activity for the kids to participate in and we talked about various options and ideas and things to do and eventually we settled on the one that we did. Okay, well, what do you do, Carrie? Well, <clears throat> I uh, I'm finishing up my graduate research, my graduate work at Penn State University, uh, finishing up my PhD in chemistry, and I have a, a research emphasis in teaching, and in particular teaching uh, students who are blind or low vision how to have a more hands-on science learning experience. So not just in chemistry, but in physics and earth science and other types of major hard science related curriculum. So basically that's what you brought to the table uh, to Camp Can Do? Yes. Well, the, the activity that we did was a, was a chemistry workshop since that's what I'm most comfortable with. That was the easiest thing for me to put together in a short amount of time. And, <clears throat> and I, what we did was we had uh, two hands-on activities for the kids. Uh, the first involved uh, the use of Ziploc bags with water and pellets of ascorbic acid and they reacted the water with the ascorbic acid and one of the products is carbon dioxide and so the, the Ziploc bags got really full of the carbon dioxide gas so the kids could actually feel the bag and they could sort of quantify how much gas they produced uh, with that activity. And then the second activity that we did was a was a, what we call the iodine clock reaction, where we reacted <clears throat> three different chemicals. Initially, they were all clear solutions, and as they react, uh, it's called the clock reaction because if you timed it, uh, it undergoes various color changes, and if you time it uh, to within a couple of seconds, you can predict when it's going to change color. Um, now, it's a chemical kinetics experiment where students typically vary the concentrations of each of the starting materials but for Camp Kendu we didn't do that we were more interested in just letting the kids experience the color changes and how they experienced the color changes was we, we I brought a device called a cell sensor which stands for submersible audible light sensor and it's a device we produced at Penn State University and it c consists of a control box that plugs into a, a a light sensor that's in a wand glass tube and you can dip the sensor into your uh, beaker or your flask where you're going to run your reaction and it measures the amount of ambient light in the room that's uh, being transmitted wow. through the liquid so as this experiment ran to completion and the color changes occurred it, it converted the light measurement into an audible tone so then the tone change would indicate the color change to the student. So hence, we've coined the phrase seeing chemical reactions through sound. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, you hit the store, and you hold down the memory button. You have to get in the door. I mean, it's still in the Oh, there we go. Oh. That's how you do it. Two thousand three hundred eighty seven. Okay, so you start at 2387. Now, did you store your final tone? Yes. Yeah. All right, well, hit that memory now. Now hit, hold on to the piece for that one. 842 hertz. 842 hertz. So she went from just under 2400 down to 840. Wow, that's pretty remarkable. What did your students think of that? Uh, they oohed and odd over it. And they, they, as far as I could sense from the instructor's standpoint, they, I mean, uh, there were varying levels of understanding of how the technology worked in the short crash course that they were given. Some kids really picked it up, and other kids sort of got data. Now, whether or not they did it exactly right, I, I'm not sure, but um, I, I suspect they probably didn't do it correctly. But the point was, was everyone 
did get data points that, and we did discuss them as a group and why they got what they got. And, and I think we asked the kids to make conclusions on what happened. And uh, of course then we asked the proverbial question, so what did you think <laughs> afterwards? Uh, the, the consensus of the group was it was positive and they all really enjoyed the hands-on activity. And many of them had never had any type of science learning experience before in their lives. So that was a whole new uh, experience for them. Well, what did you think of uh, Camp Can Do? Uh, I thought it was a wonderful, wonderfully structured event. And the activities that I was present for, because I was only there for a couple of days, uh, were very well organized and structured. And I saw a, what I would call a stepping stone process, where they started with a little technology, which is something kids can relate to. Then they came to the science workshop. Then they went to other aspects of self-confidence and self-presentation. And and then it progressed on to other physical activities that they were participating in. And I, I suspect, and it sounded to me from the rest of the itinerary for the program, that it was a, a gradual stepping stone process for them. So to build their level of confidence both about themselves and with what they were, were doing, which I thought was, was wonderful. So did you get a chance to uh, interact with the campers outside of the classroom? Mm, a little bit. Uh, not, not as much as... I would have liked, but um, the weather was really hot for me down there, and I'm not used to that high level of heat. <laughs> so I tried to stay in the shade as much as I could. But but it was it was good. We we interacted at meals, and of course on the bus, and on the uh, on the ferry over to Tobago, and uh, so it was it was it was good. It was a very nice interaction. So what did you like about the uh, camp and the uh, camp experience? Uh, what was your favorite uh, uh, or high point, uh, you mm. might say? For what I thought, for what I saw, I would have to say, uh, I, I have to bias towards my own session. Because <laughs> the kids <laughs> That's were, natural. were all focused on my content and asking questions about what I presented. And for me, that's always very rewarding and gratifying to see uh, the kids taking an interest in your professional work. Okay, and if there is uh, one thing that you will take away from that experience uh, that you had at Camp Can Do, what would that be? I would say it was exciting watching the kids learn. They were all, I guess, the equivalent of the proverbial sponge. They were in the sessions and they wanted, they paid very close attention to the presenters and they were very eager to learn. And if all my students could be that way, that'd be wonderful. But, um, so that was a, the very awe-inspiring thing that I saw of this group of campers. And hopefully we'll get that in the future camps to come. Okay, so you'd like to see uh, another camp? Oh yeah, absolutely. It was a very, very, very worthwhile experience for both myself and for the kids, and uh, it, it's pretty cutting edge what Mr. Torres is trying to do with the Can't Can Do concept. Well, that's great. Is uh, there a message that you'd like to leave with our viewers? Um, <clears throat> if you're working with students who are blind or low vision, uh, I think it's very important for you to encourage them to quote can do for themselves because uh, there'll be times when they won't have anyone else to turn to and they're going to rely on themselves to do for themselves and the quote unquote can do mindset I think is is very important not only in the classroom but in everyday life because in the end who are you going to depend on but yourself to do what you need to do. Okay that's great thank you Carrie and uh... We're certainly grateful for your participation.